Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadi Aqil. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace the Representative Council Speaker for Ziyad bin Abdullah Zainal and the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Salih Al Salih and a number of council members to greet His Majesty the King. His Majesty welcomed them and congratulated the Representative Council Speaker on winning the title of Best Political Achievement for Arab Women in 2018, which was conferred by the Arab Women Media Network. His Majesty affirmed that this achievement is added to the Kingdom's achievement record, as well as to Bahraini women who have succeeded in making more cultural achievements that enhance the role of women in the Kingdom and wished her success. His Majesty the King congratulated the Representative Council Speaker and Shura Council Chairman, the Heads of Committees and their Deputies, on their election, wishing them success in developing parliamentary and legislative work. His Majesty expressed thanks to all the efforts that contributed and the success of the Kingdom is witnessing, highlighting the Bahraini society's unity. His Majesty the King noted that laws and legislations issued by the National Council had an impact on the development of the Kingdom hailing the large turnout of the parliamentary elections in this session, which reflected the Bahraini people's awareness and their keenness to participate in the elections. It also reflected the Bahraini women's keenness to participate in the elections, which emphasizes the status of women in society and the awareness of voters about the role and status of women. His Majesty affirmed that the support of the people of Bahrain to the national democratic experience affirms the keenness of the Bahrainis to develop it. His Majesty held the achievements of the legislative authority in the Kingdom on the regulatory and legislative level through adopting the issues of the Bahraini society and their contributions. His Majesty urged them to reinforce democratic action, noting the advanced level of cooperation and compatibility between the legislative and executive authorities and the high national responsibility of the members of the two authorities that puts the interests of the homeland and citizens at the top of its priorities. The meeting discussed a number of local affairs where His Majesty affirmed that the Bahraini citizen will be the top of the Kingdom's priorities, noting Bahraini's efforts to provide the means of decent life for all citizens in light of the Comprehensive Development March with the efforts of its citizens and their keenness to serve their country and maintain its gains. His Majesty expressed aspirations for the first session of the fifth legislative term of the Representative and Shura Councils to witness more achievements that serve the National Action March, wishing the Legislative Authority success in carrying out its national responsibilities.
praising the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, Representative Council Speaker Fozia bint Abdullah Zainal expressed honor in meeting with His Majesty. She praised the directors of His Majesty towards making achievements that serve the country and its people and promote the steps of the Reform March. Through the fruitful cooperation with the Shura Council and the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Zainal praised the royal support to the Council of Representatives and their directives to maximize achievement rates. She also hailed the people of Bahrain's trust and the number of Bahraini women reaching the parliament and the wide participation in the parliamentary elections, which affirms the free national will. The Representative's Council Speaker asserted that all members of the Representative Council will continue to work as a team adhering to the Constitution and the law and guided by the National Action Charter. The Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh Saleh, said that the Royal Directives represent a landmark on the way towards serving citizens and the country and that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa is the foremost supporter of the democratic and legislative process in the kingdom. As Saleh made his remarks following his meeting with His Majesty along with Chairman of the Council's committees and its members whereby he appreciated His Majesty's support to the Council and its work in the context of developing the country under His Majesty's reign. As Saleh added that the Shura Council will continue its efforts to achieve the objectives that His Majesty highlighted in the service of the Kingdom and its people and in cooperation with the Council of Representatives and the government headed by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He praised the royal directives, which affirms the importance of cooperating with the government to achieve a decent and dignified life for the citizens, which reinforces the rule of law and supports the country's official institutions. Al Saleh also praised His Majesty's emphasis on the improvement of the standards of legislation and vowed to continue to support the legislative process in service of the kingdom and its people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace the Egyptian ambassador to Bahrain, Suha Ibrahim Rafat, who delivered to His Majesty the King a written letter from the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Hassisi, inviting him to attend and participate in the inauguration ceremony of Abdel Fattah Al Alim Mosque and Milad Al Masih Cathedral, which will be held in January. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to the Egyptian President for the invitation hailing the historic and fraternal relations between Bahrain and Egypt and the development of bilateral cooperation. His Majesty also hailed the historic role of Egypt and its pioneering contributions to enriching human civilization through establishing the principles of coexistence, tolerance and peace between various religions and cultures. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, Dirasat, and Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, who presented to His Majesty the King the Bahrain Human Development Report prepared by Dirasat in cooperation with the UN Development Program. His Majesty the King hailed the efforts exerted in preparing the edition, commending the efforts of the Chairman of Dirasat Board of Trustees in the field of scientific research and the contribution to sustainable development efforts. His Majesty the King noted the content of the report, which included various affairs, objective data, and constructive recommendations that represent important indicators to evaluate the measures taken regarding the provision of the best practices to enhance institutional efficiency and for the optimal use of resources. His Majesty stressed that the continuous international commendations that the Kingdom receives in the field of human development are a result of a comprehensive national vision that prioritizes knowledge in human development that is in accordance with the National Action Charter, the Constitution and the national legislation that are compliant with international standards. His Majesty the King affirmed that the permanent choice will be investment in the human element as a national priority in continuing the efforts aimed at increasing youth involvement in decision making. Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed expressed pride and honor in presenting Bahrain Human Development Report 2015-2018 to, to His Majesty the King. 
He asserted that meeting His Majesty the King is a source of pride to every citizen, in light of His Majesty's support to scientific research. He expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty for his wise directives regarding the content of the report as well as the work strategy of the Dirasat Center and its role in the research field. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees noted that launching the report comes in line with the 10th anniversary of launching Economic Vision 2030 as a result of His Majesty the King's reform project. He stated that the report reflects the reality of human development in Bahrain with transparency and impartiality adding that the report focus on the topic of sustainable economic growth and enhancing its courses. Sheikh Dr. Abdullah expressed thanks to the partners who contributed effectively and positively to the edition, praising the performance of Dirasat Center. He affirmed that the comprehensive royal approach represents an incentive for every effort that is aimed at enhancing the advancement and development of the kingdom. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited today the General Command of the Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF. Upon arrival, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince was received by the Commander-in-Chief of the BDF, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Defense Affairs, Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diyab bin Sagar al naimi and a number of senior officials. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince expressed his appreciation to the BDF, the Ministry of Interior and the National Guard for the central role they play in safeguarding the Kingdom's gains and their continuous efforts in maintaining regional security and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the BDF. His Royal Highness was briefed on the ongoing coordination between the BDF and the Ministry of Interior, including ways to enhance cooperation across a number of areas. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Honorary President of the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, and founder of the KHK MMA Sports Organization, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, left the city of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia after witnessing the 21st Brave Fighting Championship, which was organized by the Brave Fighting Association at the King Abdullah Sports City. His Highness was seen off by the Vice President of the General Authority for Sports Affairs, Abdurrahman Al Suhaibani the Office Director of the General Authority for Sports in Jeddah, Saeed Al Ghamdi, the President of the Saudi Martial Arts Federation, Abdulaziz Al Jalidan, the Secretary General of the Saudi Martial Arts Federation, Abdullah Sub Al Qublan, the Council General in Jeddah, Ibrahim Al Muslimani, as well as a number of consular members. His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for the warm hospitality he received, noting that this visit shall have a positive impact on bolstering bilateral cooperation between the two kingdoms and strengthening ties in all fields. His Highness wished Saudi Arabia and its people further advancement and prosperity. The Shura Council held the third meeting of the first, or rather the first ordinary session of the fifth legislative term, which was chaired by the Council's Chairman Ali bin Saleh al-Saleh. The Council examined Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee's report on a draft law that aims to amend Article 424 of the Penal Code as per Decree 15 of 1976. The amendment is intended to add a provision to Article 242 that states that embezzled money in the civil sector must be returned. The Council decided to send the draft law back to the Committee for further study. The Council then examined the Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee's report on a draft law to amend criminal procedures. The Council decided to delay discussing the draft law for two weeks based on a request by the government. The Shura Council also discussed the Services Committee's report on a draft law that pertains to private health care institutions. The report restates the committee's original position of agreeing in principle to the draft law because it agrees with the general policy of the state, which aims to grant citizens priority employment in public and private positions. 
The Council also delayed the discussion of the Public Facilities and Environment Committee's complimentary report on a draft law to change some of the provisions of Law 37 of 2014, which pertains to the regulation of the process of mining and selling sea and sand. After the session, members expressed pride in the achievements of the Shura Council and the government of Bahrain within the past year and were optimistic about the new term and the upcoming year. The main idea of the Shura Council is passing laws and uh, during the, the past uh, term we have been passing several laws that are of importance to the people of Bahrain mainly. Uh, we have uh, the child law, we have the uh, uh, violence law, we have, we have very various laws that really affect everyone in Bahrain as a whole. So I think we are proud in Shura Council with the number of laws that we are passing, we've been passing. And and as I said, it's the main goal of the Shura Council to make sure that our laws are with, within the um, international uh, treaties, within the international uh, uh, conventions that we signed for. So, uh, and we will continue this, of course. We will make our sure that our laws are in line with these international treaties and conventions. This opportunity to uh, uh, send my best to wishes to uh, the leaders of Bahrain for the new year, hoping uh, 2019 will be a year of peace, uh, love and uh, prosperity for Bahrain and all Bahrainis. It was a great start uh, to a working session for the Shura Council and we look forward to more legislation uh, coming our way. Um, as a deputy chairperson of the Foreign Affairs, Defence and National Security Committee, I was also speaker of the committee today for um, uh, two uh, items on the agenda. One of course was the article number 424 of the uh, Penal Code and of course uh, further to our debate today we were looking into, we have uh, returned it back uh, to the committee based on the request of some of the members uh, to look into it uh, in a little bit more detail and within two weeks it should be back uh, on the agenda. Uh, another um, uh, item on the agenda was the criminal proceedings, uh, article number 127 uh, and again uh, that was uh, currently for the time being uh, debate was postponed uh, until uh, another uh, session. We look forward to more uh, legislation coming our way as I mentioned and I also like to take the opportunity to wish everyone in the Kingdom of Bahrain leadership and the entire nation a uh, very happy new year 2019. The Minister of Interior Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa witnessed today the conclusion of the joint naval exercise of the Coast Guard Vigilant Guard 7 which included a number of Ministry of Interior Department's participants to ensure readiness regarding naval security which is the focus of the Coast Guard Command. The Minister reviewed the Control and Setup Committee and the course of implementation based on the hypothesis, the goals and training phases, which reflect the security services' ability to cooperate and coordinate while performing their security tasks to protect vital facilities, which aim to upgrade readiness levels. The Minister praised the readiness of the participants, which helps to achieve tasks and goals and develop performance levels, as well as the role of the Coast Guard in maintaining security. He also lauded the capabilities of the participants and their coordination. He noted that the continuous training over the years is proof of the organizational efforts to develop capabilities and expertise, which reflect the performance of the Coast Guard and participating departments, noting the importance of building on this type of training in the upcoming phase. He stressed on the importance of addressing strengths and weaknesses within the Joint Security Field Framework, which requires technological and training systems and employees' rehabilitation according to the latest international standards. For his part, the Coast Guard Commander, Rear Admiral Ayla Siadi, expressed appreciation to the Minister for his continuous support to develop the departments of the Ministry of Interior, including the Coast Guard, and praised the Public Security Chief Major General Tariq bin Hassan Al Hassan for following up on the training which helps advance security work in all fields.
The Customs Affairs clarified that the new value-added tax, VAT law, which is set to go into effect on January 1, 2019, will not be applicable to personal imports and gifts to individuals if the value of the item does not exceed 300 Bahraini dinars. The authority said that the exception to the VAT is consistent with the custom tax and it will be the result of the cooperation and coordination with the National Bureau of Gulf Taxation. The Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is moving forward with the utmost determination and confidence on the path of development that meets the aspirations of citizens in the present and the future. With these wise words, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa affirms in many meetings and events that the development process being witnessed by the Kingdom is strong and promising and has the potential to enable it to continue with the same momentum and solid will and to achieve more successes based on the efforts of the people of Bahrain in all work sites and achievements. The government, under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, was keen on creating its 2015-2018 action plan so as to become realistic and measurable. It should not be far from an important principle to which the government is committed, which is ensuring a balance between the available resources and the citizens' needs. Despite the severe economic challenges experienced by many countries of the world, including the Kingdom of Bahrain, the government headed by His Royal Highness was able to surpass them successfully. This is confirmed by the figures and statistics where the average achievement in the implementation of projects included in the program of the government until November 2018 was about 90%. This includes projects financed by the Ministry of Finance and through Gulf support, as well as development projects implemented by the private sector, which are part of the implementation of the government's action plan. These achievements in high ratios made the government under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister came through intensive efforts made to achieve the aspirations of citizens, provide them with living requirements, and play a significant role in achieving these aspirations. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's efforts can be highlighted briefly through his continuous follow-up on the progress rate in the implementation of projects, the inspection tours he undertook, the direct working meetings held by His Royal Highness with the ministers and government agencies, and His Royal Highness's swift reaction to media and social networking sites. The high percentage achieved by the government under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister in the implementation of the projects included in the government action plan for the years 2014-2018 affirms the success of the Bahraini government in achieving national goals that meet the aspirations of the country and the citizens. The Steve Toastmasters Club held its annual competition forum for the fourth time under the title The Fourth Steve Speech Forum at the Society of Engineers bringing together competitors from across the GCC under one roof. More in this report with Yasmin Ibrahim. Under the patronage of His Excellency Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, Governor of the Capital Governorate, the Seif Toastmasters Club held its annual forum under the title The Fourth Seif Speech Forum. With more than 250 attendees from across the GCC, the competition is one of the club's leading initiatives, aiming to provide a positive, supportive learning environment for all its participants from the kingdom and the region to improve their public speaking skills. The Toastmasters organization, we practice our public speaking and leadership skills. Everybody has these skills, but we need to motivate it and develop it. 
how we can practice these uh, skills by our meetings, by practicing, by, by all of these. So, so our gathering today, we will gather all the participants in the, in the Gulf and we can get our experience more and more. We leave, we lift from, 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 from this level to this level. Communications and leaderships are extremely, if very important for the success of any individual. Whenever the qualifications are the same, whether it's academic experience, the biggest differentiator of all is communications and leadership. Having these skills will make a big difference in working in teams, at home, in life in general. The forum, which is an annual competition for members of the club, covered four areas, Arabic comic speeches, improvisation and evaluation speeches. The competition represents a transformation for the ambitions of the participants, providing them a rich opportunity to learn from shared experiences and to contribute value to the importance of communication. In this event, in that spirit of becoming better leaders, better communicators, better individuals, we have gathered here in, from Bahrain, from Kuwait, from Saudi, from Emirates, and that is the beauty of this organization. We all gather here in the spirit of becoming better individuals. We have our core values of integrity, respect, service, and excellence, and that is what binds us together. And we as Toastmasters sincerely believe that these are the core values which we can utilize to become better leaders, communicators, but also better humans. The competition aims to promote the work of the Toastmasters Club in Bahrain, as well as empower and bring together the Bahraini and GCC youth in the Arab clubs under one roof to share experiences and spread the Toastmasters concept and its importance in building the individual and society. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. Bahrain's Chamber of Commerce and Industry, along with the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, organized a workshop this morning on the new commercial registration fees, which aims at raising business owners' awareness of the new fees that come into effect on the 1st of December 2018. More in this report by Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. Reflecting their keenness and raising awareness among the local business community, Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, along with the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, affirmed their continuous cooperation and coordination to find solutions to all issues of concern to business owners and organized this morning the new commercial registration fees workshop, explaining to them the new fees that came into effect on the 1st of December 2018 in detail, the exempted fees, and how the business businessmen can manage their commercial records. Seminar it was very very important and uh, it is very focused with regards to the activity and how to calculate the fees for the activities. We explained to them how to calculate the fees and how it is, how, what is the structure of, of the fees and we addressed all the questions and we are ready to have any more uh, clarification our ministry or even the Chamber of Commerce I believe they promised if they have any uh, clarification or any inquiry they are ready to answer. Both parties stated that the decision has been postponed several times to conduct the necessary studies and poll the views to reach the best mechanism of application. There has been a study between us and the Minister of Commerce which took about six months. We've gone a lot of details. We've discussed all the different scenarios and eventually we came to this conclusion after a lot of discussion. And I have to say, while I'm on, on live on television, that was very, very important that our partners, they were all involved. All the stakeholders were involved. The fruitful discussions have covered many issues, concerns, and a response to many inquiries. A very informative seminar has been held here today on the mechanism of the application of the new fees with a lot of fruitful discussions with businessmen from different sectors. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffur.